Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley, and in this video I'm starting a series on churches in North Wales. This is the Church of the Holy Trinity, Gwernerfield. It was built 1871-2. And the reason it had to be built was the previous church that was built in 1838. This is one of those areas that until the basically middle part of the 19th century, the provision for worship was primarily from the nonconformists. And if you were Anglican, you had to walk to the nearby town of Mould or to one of the other nearby churches. But in 1838, a simple church was built on this site. In 1860, some miscreants burned it down, stealing in the process the sum of 13 pounds, 11 shillings, and 9 pence, which was a fair amount in those days. The building is in what is known as the uh, geometrical style, imitating medieval style, that's what's often referred to as Gothic, we're in the chancel here. The chancel is, of course, the location where the communion table is, and also where the choir and organ are located. So let's have a, a look around the building and see what we can see here. Holy Trinity, as I said, dates from the 1870s, placing it very much in the Victorian Gothic. And you can see here, first of all, we've got these paintings of angels with censers either side, worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Um, it's a relatively high church, you can tell from various things, especially the little tabernacle there, although that does appear to be a later addition filling in as it does a um, piscina, a little sink for washing the communion vessels. We have a communion table that is set forward but is set altar-wise. Um, the some good woodwork, a little credence table, and a couple of the pre dieu there. And of course, the window. The Victorians like their stained glass windows, particularly their east windows. The interesting thing here is that there isn't a depiction of the crucifixion here. There's the events surrounding the crucifixion the agony in the garden, the Last Supper, and then the resurrection. You'll notice that uh, the Apostle. The Apostle Peter is identified by his keys, um, a convention, of course, that's imitating medieval art. Um, we have here in the side window here the emblems of the four evangelists. And there's not a lot of memorials in the chancel. The chancel of a Victorian church like this was quite often emphasizing this is where the clergy are, so the memorials are to the clergy. So here, David Gwynvall Lewis vicar of this parish, 1954 to 1979. Um, eagle lectern, of course, the nave. Um, not much you can do about the yellow light, because that is the actual light of the church. And the roof, uh, again, those lights blazing away in it, but a wagon roof, one of the glories of the church. The other one is a memorial at the back, which we'll go and see shortly. Here we have memorials to do with choristers and choir masters. Of course, the Welsh are famous for their singing. Um, there is the clergy door to the vestry with its uh, little heater above it and the organ. It's all very much of a period. Um, some of the woodwork in the chancel appears to be later, but the much of it is, will be original. You can see there the great big iron pipes for heating, which is very important in the winter in this part of the world. So we go down into the nave, we turn around and look at the eagle here. We've got in the windows here. You have uh, angels praising the Lord. And here, Basil Edwin Phillips, this is the, the local family, um, the Phillips family. Um, Basil Edwin Phillips here, Lieutenant Commanding, Lieutenant Colonel Commanding the 5th Royal Welsh Fusiliers, Flintshire Territorials, born May the 30th, 1864. He devoted his life to the service of his church and country and fell in battle on August 
the 10th, 1915, while gallantly leading his men in attack on the enemy's position near Silver Bay in the Gallipoli Peninsula. He was Deputy Lieutenant and a magistrate of this county, and for 20 years church warden of this parish. The eternal guard is thy refuge, and underneath the everlasting arms, and beneath memorial to Basil Hugh Phillips Heaton of Rural, who was a D-Day veteran. More angels praising the Lord. This again is the, for the Phillips family. The impressive nave. Christ as the Good Shepherd is a very popular um, image. And you can see this is a memorial to William David Owen, rural dean of Molden, for 41 years vicar of this parish. So, of course, the imagery of the Good Shepherd then is imagery to do with the pastor, the minister, as the, the shepherd of the flock. And here, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. It's a most interesting structure, a little font. The little font looks to me to be older than this church, quite possibly from the previous church, and survived the fire. Um, but here we have an artist's interpretation of the original building, which is, you can see, very, very simple. Um, demolished 1870. They tried to rebuild after the fire, but the rebuild apparently was not... Uh, not satisfactory, as they say. So here we are at the back of the church, and we can see the great chancel arch. You will notice that it's all very open. It's designed so that you can see everything in the chancel, whereas many medieval churches, the chancel arch hides a great chunk of the chancel. And this is one of the differences between the Victorians and certainly Victorians who were willing, as the architect here, to interpret the, the medieval style and those who just imitated it. Um, here we have um, this memorial was originally executed in memory of John and Jane, children of Thomas Floyd of Leghorn. They died on the 23rd and 25th September 1842. It's now placed in the church to the glory of God and sacred to the dear memory of Thomas Lloyd, his son, born December the 3rd, 1835, died July the 8th, 1905, by his children, my loyal hearts and true, stand ever in the light, all rapture through and through in God's most holy sight, November 1905. Um, and it's, you see, you've, you, obviously the, you've got the, the older boy and the little girl in his arms and the, the angel gathering. And it's, it's quite sentimental, um, but it's a good piece of... Uh, memorial sculpture and it very much reflects the tastes of the 1840s 1850s this this will be very much an original window and it's quite um geometrical um rather than being um i'm looking at that actually it's presented by fred c phillips february the 15th MDCCCL, that is, M, of course, is 1,000, D, 500, 600, 700, 850. So actually, this would be from the old church. This window, haha, there's a, a board. Formerly, the east window of the original church was restored by public subscription in 1981, the year of the marriage of H.R.H., H., the Prince of Wales, and Lady Diana Spencer. Um, has lasted longer than that marriage did. Uh, but that is the original east window. You see how different it is from the east window today. It's geometrical patterns. It's not images. It's not Bible text. And, of course, here we have the war memorial. Um, Private Elias Edwards Sapper, that's Royal Engineers, Edward Bartley, Private Robert Evan Jones, Major James Lloyd Evans, Gunner Joseph Edwin Smith, Private Stanley Jones, Gunner Edwin Edwards of this parish who fell in the Great War, 1914 to 1918. And it's quite typical that you've got uh, a major, you've got some middle-ranking officer, and then you've got private soldiers. The, the uh, gentry suffered as well as the common people. We it's often, certainly by Marxists, portrayed that the, second, the First World War was uh, 
aristocratic generals, aristocratic officers leading the common people to death. But really, the junior officers, ca as lieutenants, captains, majors, paid a great price, and many, many a family lost the air in the First World War. It's one of the reasons why the First World War shakes the foundations of society. So here we are, Holy Trinity, Guernerfield, an 1870s church, a good piece of Victorian Gothic. It's not outstanding, but it is, it's not dull. I mean, some Victorian churches, so many you go, and it's, it's like they're from a pattern book, not here. Here we have a building that has its own character. Well, we go outside now and have a look at the outside, which is quite interesting, really. So here we are outside Holy Trinity, Guernerfield. The style is quite interesting. It's not uncommon in this part of the world. It was very popular with the Chester architect, John Douglas, who did quite a number of his notable buildings in this area of North Wales, this is in Flintshire, in Denbyshire, and of course in Cheshire. You will notice it doesn't have a West Tower, but it's a significantly more, in, more exciting building than the original building on the site. The original building is a very simple structure, no division between nave and chancel. There's a minimal division between nave, nave and chancel here, but here we have this interesting little turret with its flesh on the top. Um, it's effectively, we can't have a, afford a tower. Towers cost quite a lot of money. You often find Victorian Gothic churches where there's a sort of stump where the tower was supposed to be and it was never finished. And a building like this, they don't have the, the money for something as fancy and generally not very useful as a tower. What you've got is the little flesh there and you've got the bell or bells in there. So let's take a look around the outside of Holy Trinity. Well there we are, a good, good image of the church and chancel all the way through. And you can just see that although nave and chancel have the, pretty much the same roof line, there is that uh, gable there with this little pointy bit on top marking the division and that big east window. There's a substantial graveyard. Remember this burials here start in the 1830s. I think this is one of the older graves here. Um, 1864, from Amelia, the wife of uh, Amelia, rather, the yes, uh, daughter, rather, of William and Margaret Jones Penivron. Died aged five years old. Obviously, all in Welsh, because that's the, the local language. Um, it's a tractor going past. We are, after all, in the country, more or less. And there, you can just see beyond the church there, the old village school. Obviously, this would have been a church school, and church and school were closely linked. There again, you see the porch, the buttresses. Hopefully, in this case, the well, in fact, in this case, you can tell the buttresses are original. It's not a case of uh, we made a mistake somewhere. It does happen with some some churches. Again, you have these memorials, uh, mixture of English and Welsh in them. which you'd expect here. We're relatively close to the border, um, an area where English is, is spoken. You can tell that in Wales, by the way, if you look at the road signs, which language is on the top. If the language on the top is Welsh, then Welsh is the primary language spoken in that part of Wales. Um, little vestry there with its chimney and window. The north side here is, of course, less interesting than the, the south. It's also where you've got the oil tank, which is very important for heating, because heating in this part of the world, if you don't have decent heating, 
then your congregation is not very happy in the winter, particularly today. It's a little, little hall added on this side. Um, quite common today to find little halls added like that. It's where the toilets and uh, other facilities are, but the main church hall now is the old village school. It's a very good example of a little old village school. And here we are at the west end looking up the turret. There we are, the little, little side hall here. And the window, the east window of the old church introduced into the new building, the replacement. Um, it's a, a good example of what the Victorians did when, when you got a decent architect, when you got an architect who wasn't just a, a pattern book man, but a man with proper training and his own ideas. And there, there it is, a very noble Victorian church. Well, I'll just say a few closing words and the video will come to an end. So there we have it, Holy Trinity Church, Gwernerfield, a little Victorian Gothic church up quite high up here at Gwernerfield near Mould. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy these videos looking at old British churches. Although we're starting in the 19th century in Wales, God willing we shall go on into, you know, go on back in time into the earlier centuries and enjoy the heritage that this nation has. Thank you for watching. May God bless you and keep you.